them for Judy. <laughs> Uh, what this congregation and gathering of friends and colleagues might not know is that Jude and I have never met before today. We are good friends and close colleagues through the miracle of technology, particularly through the new thing under the sun known as social media. Some users have decried Facebook and blogging as false idols that create faux intimacy and more isolation among their users, yet Jude, you and I know that to be an unfair and untrue accusation. You and I have embraced new technology and used it as a forum for public ministry and theology to evangelize through it, and personally we've used it as a means by which we have been able to confide in each other support each other, do discernment together, bemoan the trials and tribulations of the mortgage process <laughs> together, and finally to plan this our big ecclesiastical blind date. <laughs> You're much cuter in person. <laughs> so, I don't know. I know I got to meet Brian too. <laughs> charged to the minister. Jude, I want to first charge you to be passionately attentive to the life of your parish and to its local immediate needs and realities. Now this may seem to be a bit of a contradiction to what I just said about celebrating the new technologies that have allowed you to connect with people all over the world. But I do, while I do encourage you to maintain that beyond congregation consciousness and to stay engaged with the broader world beyond Huntington, I want you and charge you to stay grounded always in what is happening right here among your people <coughs> and make that your focus. You know, Jude, that we are living in an uncertain time as regards the local church or fellowship. You know that you and I may be part of a, the last generation to be able to expect that full-time parish ministry is a reasonable vocational goal. As Methodist Bishop William Willimon said recently in reference to having to close hundreds of his parishes, I don't know what God is doing, but I do know that God is not invested in real estate. <laughs> that both the cheerfully unchurched and those who are suspicious and rejecting of what we charmingly call organized religion have very little idea of what we do in our beloved houses of worship. Most of the nuns that Vanessa spoke about earlier don't know or care about the difference between a UU fellowship, the traditional Protestant church down the street, and Temple Beth El. For, all, for them, we're all just religious people doing that old, funny thing called religion. Those are the times we live in. You know, Jude, that no matter how hard you work, how beautiful a ministry you and this congregation live out in this Long Island community, you may never see congregational growth in the form of more bodies coming into this building, participating in congregational life in traditional ways, and pledging to pay the minister's salary. But that is not why we do this work in a local congregation. We do it not because it is we who are making something great happen by being wonderful Unitarian Universalists. We do it because we are being faithful to what the spirit of love and justice is trying to do through us at this place, in this time. So there's a difference. And so Jude, I charge you to remember that it is not by your work or your overwork that success will happen for you or this fellowship. Self-care is just a clinical term we use in the ministry to say nicely what we don't dare say bluntly, which is you can really fry yourself <laughs> doing this work deep down to your core fry dark night of the soul fry <laughs> watch it <laughs> remember what uncle wendell said by uncle wendell berry not 
by your will alone is the house carried through the night. We're watching you. <laughs> and your schedule. <laughs> Third Jude, and I'm going to bring you up at this point, very similar to what was just said to your congregation, I charge you to be yourself. We are living in an era where the old ministerial persona and masks are falling away and clergy have tumbled off the pedestal of unearned trust, praise, and status. Good. <laughs> Never be afraid to let everyone see that God calls all kinds of interesting and unexpected characters to be ministers. <laughs> Not just the obviously pious and holy types. Why ever anyone ever bought that shtick in the first place to not be? That is your charism. It's your gift. It's a gift of the Spirit. If you do this work right, you're going to get into trouble regularly. <laughs> no matter how hard you try to manage your persona. And so I want to charge you to not expend your precious energy doing that, to be some old, outworn expectation or, or image of what a minister looks like or sounds like. So I've told you what not to do, and now I'm going to charge you with what you should do. You should pray. You should pray constantly in a way that becomes as natural as breathing to you and as frequent. Because although I can't claim to know what God is doing with an entity known as the local congregation that meets in a special building known as the Church Jude, it seems possible to me that the Spirit is calling us out kicking our doors open and pushing us out so that religion is not something we practice on a prescribed hour of the week, but something that we do and are with our whole lives and beings everywhere we are. As a minister, you have been ordained to make the concerns of the soul your primary concern. You have been called to cultivate compassion, justice, and reverence among all people, and to preach a definition of success that is not contingent on outward achievement, but on inward integrity and a sense of meaning. You have been trained in this to be non-anxious. But Jude, I charge you to be more than non-anxious. I charge you to be faithful as deeply and constantly faithful as you are able to be. You cannot cultivate this faithfulness through work. You cannot cultivate that faithfulness through learning the latest Alvin Institute technique on growth. <laughs> you cannot cultivate this faithfulness through committee meetings, although a good committee meeting can help. You cultivate this faithfulness through constantly orienting your heart to the holiness that is the heart of being. So you pray. Sometimes on your knees, if necessary, in tears, if necessary, through song, through laughter, pray always. And in times of tempest and difficulty, because they will come, never hesitate to bring yourself and this congregation back to just this moment. This moment of high resolve and deep commitment and covenanting. This is exactly why we enact these ancient rituals, to set a moment aside in time and space where we are awakened, where we are clear who we are and to what we are called. So blessings on this new calling. May this be a ministry worth loving. <laughs> For those who see God, may God be with us. For those who embrace life, may life return our affections. For those who seek a right path, may a way be found, and the courage to take it step by step. For this is the day we are given. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Amen.